what if you had one controller that can send key commands, MIDI, and Mackie control from within one surface? You see, Push covers session view perfectly. It allows you to create a song and edit all seamlessly within Push if you're working in session view. However, when it comes time to working in arrangement view, you'll find yourself needing another MIDI controller if you are the kind of person that likes hands-on control of your session, which will bring you to having to purchase a huge Mackie control surface, as an example, or a number of products are available out there that communicate either through the Mackie control um, or MIDI. Stream Deck by Elgato has been used for video ed editors and content creators for years now. In fact, I've been using it for those purposes as well as some MIDI purposes that have become really enhanced because of this new Stream Deck Plus. You see it has knobs and, well, also these knobs are uh, customized because I purchased a few very rubbery, awesome um, feeling knobs from DJ Tech Tools. You could do that too. Great uh, place in the Bay Area. In any event, uh, so Stream Deck Plus can communicate in all of these um, protocols. And furthermore, each knob, each button can send a different command to your DAW. That is why this Stream Deck Plus is a dedicated controller for Ableton Live for me. And I'm going to show you how I use it. First, this device has the ability to uh, host different windows that you create and you can scroll through them. And they uh, come back in a loop fashion. I have three in particular. And this first one has editing commands that I find myself are very valuable in arrangement view. You're not gonna find any record or uh, stop buttons or anything like that. Um, if you would like that, you can create that yourself for your own Stream Deck template. Excuse me. But mine just has cut time, paste time, duplicate time, delete time, and consolidate are the first ones I want to discuss. And that's just going to save you time of having to go to the menu to do these uh, to do these things. Excuse me, that's a quick time player. Um, and really, uh, just a time saver for that, okay? So if you're an Ableton user, you know what I'm talking about with that. The next buttons, this is when it gets good. I just wanted to get through the boring ones. Here we have um, grid off, grid on, and then we can increase and decrease the uh, grid as well, right? So... That works in conjunction with a few other things. I'm also using my um, uh, my trackpad to navigate as well. So you, you're, you're going to see some uh, of that going on. Um, that's where that's coming from. I also use it to zoom. So I don't find myself in need of any zooming. Um, my trackpad handles that, which is why I don't have it here. However, I do have a few th uh, things on my knobs that I'd like to show you. The first one, this one is called Scrub, and that's what it does. It scrubs left and right. And this communicates via Mackie Control. Pretty simple, right? Now, I'd like to uh, show you the fact that this is not only a knob, but it's also a button, and you can designate a different action for that. And I have designated that to be you got it. We can actually create something that you don't have access to. You see, the 
delete and actual create locator um, uh, commands do not have actual uh, key commands. So for some reason, Mackey control can access that and um, you don't have to use uh, MIDI map for the set, which is normally what you would do. In fact, this entire uh, template doesn't have any MIDI map except for this last one here, which I'll show you in a second. So yeah, so you can scrub and create a marker. Scrub to the location and create a marker. Really simple, pretty awesome. Uh, that's the first knob. The second knob is the take lane knob. So you can select a track that has take lanes and you can view them. But not only that, but you can also increase and decrease the size of the track. So again, I'm zooming with my track ball, I'm sorry, my track pad, and I am changing the size of my track. I'm also um, hiding, showing my take lanes, and then I can also go right to my next knob, which has two functions, up and down or left and right. And they're just arrow buttons from the keyboard, but much more useful because here we can use this to, of course, um, nudge left and right, no problem there, except we actually have our grid as well. So we can use the grid uh, to uh, enable just a finer amount of control or a larger uh, control, you know, right? A wider um, grid. So that's available from that. Also, we can use the up and down to, let's say, select the level and just, you know, adjust the level directly from there or the pan, or whatever you have selected. This is kind of a, a Swiss Army knife, this particular knob with its two functions. The last one here is pretty mind-blowing. Let's uh, double click on our clip. And I don't know if you're aware of the fact that you can actually MIDI map the gain and the pitch to all the clips from one uh, location. Well, I did that and I also created this knob right over here that allows me to automatically uh, change the gain or the pitch after one click. So let me get this straight. I can use the scrub to go to the next or the previous file, select it, and immediately change the pitch or the gain. Right? Or we can change its position as well. Or, and we can change the size of the track. My trackball, I'm zooming. So this is why this is such a great work surface. Um, for me, uh, working in arrangement view, I find myself having to navigate and do a lot of menial tasks like this particular um, baseline. It is composed of a whole bunch of different takes. So I really use the take lane um, controls for that. I did um, to create the uh, perfect take. So that's the first um, window. Let's move on to the second. All right, so this window allows me to maintain the utmost professionalism in my session by being able to rename according to these categories that are available here. It's kind of like categories uh, stream deck style. And yeah, so let's see what we have here. I have to stand up so I can see better. Um, as an example, here we have a piano, an electric piano. So let's go to, to the keys category and let's call it an electric piano. And there it is. That took one second, right? Um, and we have another electric piano here, this Whirly. 
Um, yeah, let's call it electric piano as well. Good, good, good. Um, right, so we can basically do this with one button. Let's go back to all the categories. We have drums, bass, guitar, keys, synth, brass, strings, vocals, and I have yet to create just an orchestral instrument uh, one as well, which is the next uh, level. But this window can save you a lot of time and just help you to make to have a nice clean uh, session. Um, you know, you can also, by the way, uh, select multiple um, uh, clips as such. And this is a bass right here, right? So I'm just going to go to the bass category, which is right here. And I'm going to press bass. And, oh, conflict here. What happened? Uh, that's not what we wanted to do. Let's do that again. Bass. Oh, definitely a conflict. I just wanted to make sure that this is happening. Um, very interesting. Very interesting. Um, let's open that up. See what's going on with that. Let's call it sub base, which is a different set of parameters. So let's see. Okay, so here we have some conflicts, which I am really glad to have run into. I don't know what is going on with those, but I need to fix them. So, but what really should be happening is let me select this right over here and go to drums. And do I have a percussion? Let's call it Tom. It's actually a conga, but let's call it Tom. And there you go, Tom, Tom, Tom. That took, you know, all of a second. And that's the way it should work. And I don't know why that those are broken and I need to fix them. So I apologize for that. It's a perfectly human doing this, not an AI. Um, in any event, let's move on to the next window here and it is my favorite and really just, okay. You're gonna be mind blown by this one. Remember a minute ago I told you that this scrub right over here allows you to scrub to the different sections, right? And you can create a marker. Well, what if you can create a marker, select it and give it a name right away. Scrub to the next section. Create marker, select it, give it a name, according to a, uh, a part of a song. <laughs> Isn't that incredible? Which is why, well, all of these are from failed attempts at videos. I tried a few. <laughs> um, but my song really consists of all of this. And, you know, you would be shocked at how quickly I made all of this happen. Which will take a long time because you have to create, set, give it a name. It's all the same names, verse, chorus. Why would I have to rethink that as well with the drums, with the kicks and all of that? It can all be available at the press of a button. Makes my life easier. And um, in the next video, I'm going to show you how we can create this. All right. So check it out.